taken out your time here. Before we begin, I would like to know my audience a little better. Uh, how many of you are uh, therapists? Whether you be a psychologist or a special educator or a remedial instructor or a speech therapist. How many of you work with children, basically? <clears throat> can I see, uh, see it in the chat or uh, can any one of you show, uh, raise your hands, uh, uh, show me the reaction? Okay. All right, a couple of you. Thank you for that. And how many of you are teachers uh, or educators who work with children? Wow, I see a lot of teachers here. <laughs> Very nice to know. And how many of you are parents? Okay. There are quite a lot of parents here as well. Amazing. And how many of you are uh, instructors or, uh, you know, from any other profession who are very curious to learn about what parent management training is? Okay, there are a couple of you as well. Great. So before we begin with the session, I would like you all to know that uh, parent management training is something that I've been meaning to take for quite some time. It is a very, very beautiful intervention because I personally believe through my experience that both parents and uh, therapists can, uh, you know, collaborate and work together uh, to bring about a meaningful change in their children, right? And more importantly, it gives autonomy, a confidence and uh, a support for the parents that they're not alone in this. And, you know, they also know they have someone to rely on and fall back on. Therapists, on the other hand, also know that they can, uh, you know, share their responsibilities by uh, actively engaging parents in the intervention protocol. And they know that together they can make a big difference in their child's lives. Which is where uh, the, I built the entire uh, workshop on uh, similar lives. Uh, so let's quickly begin. Uh, before we begin, I would uh, we will begin with the parent management training. Uh, so basically, it is a very cohesive approach or a united approach between therapists and the parents, where we can uh, easily identify, recognize, uh, educate the parents, and more importantly, uh, remediate any behaviors that are potentially harmful to the child. When we use the word maladaptive, please understand it is a technical term. In no way it means uh, something too uh, harsh or something overly negative. But its simplest of the words it means any behavior that is harmful to the child or is not allowing the child to socially, behaviorally grow as an individual. Right? Next slide, please. So over here, throughout the session, we learn what is parent management training. We learn the background and history of parent management training. What are the different techniques parents can learn from therapists? And therapists can train the parents to work in a cohesive order. What are the efficacy or the benefits of uh, uh, parent management training? What are the challenges? Uh, what are the uh, shortcomings of this intervention and what we have learned in conclusion. Next slide, please. So before we begin with the entire workshop, I would like you all to prepare for the term behavior. So in the very simplest of the form, uh, cite the next slide. Behavior is nothing but something which we can observe. Uh, Saiti, next slide, please. Uh, something which we can observe, meaning the action is again present in the environment. It is visible to us with our eyes. Then these actions or these behaviors can be recorded or they can be measured. Measured in two ways. One is how often you have the child has repeated the behavior. 
and second is for how long or the duration of the behavior and then we also uh, at times are able to record how intense or how serious is the behavior right and the third way to understand behavior is to can this action or a behavior be applied in different uh, situation for example if a child is throwing a tantrum about not liking a particular vegetable they don't like say beetroot now is the child not liking beetroot only at home or is it even in a shopping mall or is it even in classroom or is it even in a playground so we see that this behavior is consistent of not liking the fruit or a vegetable in multiple situations and not just in one place and then we also have a stimuli response stimuli response is something we will learn as the uh, presentation goes it is in short that with every behavior comes an antecedent antecedents are nothing but behave a uh, direction or movers of a behavior which guide a behavior and consequences nothing but a follow up of how the behavior is going to look like so uh, that in that way we have antecedent and consequence to behavior so i think next slide please so what exactly is parent management training parent man uh, so i think next slide please parent management training is nothing but a behavioral intervention protocols again where both the psychologist or the remedial therapist or special educator or a behavioral psychologist will come together with the parent and they will lay down common expectations and goals for the child these expectations and goals will most often be social and behavioral goals that will identify and uh, look for an opportunity to change these uh, identified behaviors again these identified behaviors will be maladaptive or unhelpful behaviors for the child again the entire focus lies on helping the child move towards uh, sociable and uh, positive behaviors so when we go back to the history of parent management training uh, so i think we see that uh, the whole process of psychotherapy and counseling comes from biophysics biophysics was a very popular stream of studies in 1800s where people uh, especially scientists and physicists first studied the whole idea of stimuli response with the environment they studied how uh, plants and how nature was reacting to the sun and they started generalizing this learning with the human behavior as well and they realized that with every antecedent comes a behavior and these antecedents and consequence determine the quality of a life for instance if a human being or an adult is working really hard towards growing crops and the crops come out in a very fruitful expected manner there is a high consequence that the uh, farmer is able to sell the crops and gain uh, you know expected monetization or, or expected monetary rewards so these everyday instances were studied and they be, and they began to build Uh, behavioral modules for intervention but over a period of time again we had a shift in psychotherapy where the client was given the sole focus uh, in a session where it would be only a therapist and a client and they would focus a lot on the problems and coming out at a solution now that became the traditional approach over period of time but again in 1920s what happened was behavioral psychology came into existence with uh, operant conditioning classical conditioning and operant conditioning basically came gave uh, into the picture where both uh, pavlo and skinner realized that uh, with every stimuli there is a consequence and when we control or manipulate the consequence the behavior of the person will also change and then with 30 years of the research on behavioral psychology 
gave rise to parent management training. So I think next slide, slide please. Again, like I've said, behaviorists were credited for bringing up psychotherapeutic intervention and they challenged your traditional therapy. They challenged the monotony of how uh, traditional psychology works. So basically, Thorndike in 1910 has uh, clearly researched and concluded that living beings will repeat action if they produce satisfaction and they will also be deterred from an action if it is uncomfortable or if it produces any discomfort. So I think next slide, please. Now what happens is, <coughs> Behavioral psychology did not just emerge out of thin air. There is a lot of scientific proof and validity behind it. Scientific, how do you know if any intervention is scientific? If it is replicable in different situations? Anytime you apply the protocol, it should bring about the same response. And more importantly, it cannot be applied in one situation, but it can be applied in multiple scenarios as well. So some of the most, uh, uh, say the previous slide, please. Some of the most uh, prominent uh, examples of uh, behavioral interventions are timeout procedures, positive reinforcement, and modeling uh, social behaviors. Uh, say the next slide. So how do you dis? Uh, how was parent management training really discovered? Uh, say the next slide. So in the 1960s. We had an entire revolution of uh, Freudian psychology. We had a revolution of uh, behavioral psychology, social psychology, and cognitive psychology as well. So what happened over the period of time? Parent management training uh, was concluded by a group of clinic child psychologists who really studied the entire uh, therapy modules that were present in uh, times uh, up until 1950s, they have evaluated the efficacy of behavioral psychology, and that is where they have created steps and uh, methods for uh, including and involving parents into intervention. Society. Next slide. So basically, parent management training is a hands-on intervention where you will begin as a psychologist first uh, training and educating the parents on what are maladaptive behaviors, how they can be improved and changed using nothing but behavioral modification interventions. What are these behavioral interventions we are going to learn over time? So again, behavioral intervention is nothing but a pool of treatment programs. There is not one method or two methods. But there are multiple programs and charts, which are again given as an education to parents. And these intervention protocols will first and always focus on how the parent interacts with the child and how a parent can effectively deal with maladaptive behaviors, which include irritation, aggressive behaviors. When I talk about aggressive, it is not always hitting or showing a physical power, but it can also include, uh, you know, or not talking to a parent, uh, giving silent treatment, uh, you know, pinching another child, throwing a tantrum, screaming and yelling. These are all at a multiple grades of aggression. Showing hyperactivity, non-compliance towards social norms. Non-compliance can simply also mean if you are taking a child to the temple, it is very expected from them to be uh, compliant to the norms there. They're expected to pray to the God, wait in line to, you know, speak blessings. Or if you take them to a shopping mall and you're waiting in a line to bill your, uh, you know, uh, shopping cart. When you go in a movie, it is expected of the child to, you know, watch the movie in silence or use a very low voice to talk to a parent. So simple non-compliances uh, which happen from a child are also addressed here, along with handling temper tantrums, with a lot of difficulty with following directions, learning uh, social skills. Some children may not always uh, 
uh, you know immediately learn social skills they need a lot of time to learn them so how we can identify that a child has really not learned social skill or is it just the non compliance these differences are also taught to the parents and how a parent can effectively communicate with the child without raising a uh, voice with you know proper uh, voice modulation uh, choosing the right words to approach a child and how to handle a child if he is th uh, throwing a fit or a rage saiti next slide please so we'll again begin with the entire process of uh, the first step of parent management training is to bring uh, elicit the history of concerns what i mean by history of concerns is the therapist will uh, build a rapport with the parent first and then slowly seek out what are the common concerns the uh, parent has with the child what are the problematic behaviors or the maladaptive behaviors or what are the behaviors the parent wants to see a change in their child what are the expectations set by the parents for the child and what have they tried previously that has not worked with the child or it has only made things worse so this will all come under the history of concerns once uh, saitik please go back once the history is uh, recorded the next step is uh, taking the birth and developmental history of the child when i say birth and development history from the time the child was conceived to the whole duration of the pregnancy and post birth if there were any complications such as a uh, history of the parents both the father and mother's history of heart health uh, diabetic uh, history or any signs of uh, you know uh, genetic issues are there those things will be assessed uh during pregnancy were there any difficulties or complications faced by parents after birth were there any complications for example if the child was uh, underweight or overweight was there a normal delivery or a c section was there fever were there seizures present were there any uh, signs of pneumonia or was the child uh, you know not responsive at the time of birth was there any history of fatigue in the mother during the birth giving process all this developmental history and birth history will be collected now once the history is collected the therapist will conduct child assessment child assessment is again conducted in two ways the first method is directly giving a screening assessment to the parents now these assessments are standardized they are used throughout clinics and hospitals and educational institutions so the parents will be given a screening form where the parents will actively fill out these assessments some of these assessments will be child behavioral checklist or there will be developmental question developmental questionnaires uh, there might be autism or adhd rating scale right and uh, if the child is present with the parent at the time of screening then the child will be given social uh, in uh, social intelligence scale like vsms or they might be given an iq assessment to check the average intelligence of the child they might be given again uh, or functional assessment test to check for any signs of developmental challenges uh, once uh, the screening is completed based on the history taken based on the assessment the parent will be psychoeducated by the therapist the parent will be given the uh, realistic picture of what the therapist has found out they are going to give a conclusion on what they should be expecting from the child and what a strict treatment plan that will suit the child and the parent again it is very important to note that both the parent and the therapist should be on the same page if they are not on the same page it is very important that they first build a common rapport agree to the common goals and then start uh, looking for an intervention plan 
a list of treatment options will be given to the parent where the parent can choose or the parent can decide on what goals can be met first therapist opinions and their uh, you know expertise will also be included in that and then the parents will be trained on different behavioral skills or intervention uh, treatment plans now once the parent is uh, beginning the training this training can happen anywhere from once in a week or it can also happen 3 days in a week or 4 days in a week depending on the uh, intensity or the seriousness of the child's maladaptive behavior once the parent is trained the parent is again expected to maintain a journal is expected to record the progress or uh, you know any degree uh, if there is no progress then what are the new challenges the parent is facing they are expected to come back to the therapist discuss on any new in, uh, strategies that they can work on with the child and then there will be a feedback session so this is the entire process of the parent management training so we'll begin with a small example here in the first passage you see a small history was collected from the parents ajay is a 6 year old child who hails or is from a middle class family he does not have any history of developmental delay and he was exposed to watching television right from first one year both the parents are working and he is raised by his grandparents at the age of 4 Ajay began to display behaviors of non-compliance. He would not follow social rules. For example, sitting in the classroom, waiting in line uh, during the checkout at the uh, you know grocery shopping, turn taking, and making very feeble eye contact. Meaning he is not consistently making eye contact when talking to others in uh, social groups. But apart from this. he was also engaging in throwing toys all over the house he was tearing the paper and throwing bits of paper all over the house he was running away from home without informing anyone and sometimes he would cry loudly uh, very loudly right before falling asleep now both the parents are concerned and they sought remediation from the therapist uh, till now are there any doubts any questions no so we can move on right you can all just show thumbs up so that i know we can move on all right thank you so uh, next let me say it now what the therapist has done is they've conducted an assessment uh, of adhd autism uh, spectrum uh, challenge conduct disorder developmental delays social intelligence and intellectual quotient assessment now after these assessments it was revealed that the child has scored below average in social intelligence but his iq was average and there were no uh, there was a very mild signs of uh, attention deficit disorder but again hyperactivity was not present there were no signs of uh, autism conduct disorder and developmental issues that were present in the child now what happened is the intervention protocol the intervention plan included both psychoeducation and how parents can reinforce uh, the child's positive social behaviors now what are these positive social behaviors and how a reinforcement can work we learn in the next segment so again now we learn about the uh, intervention protocols which are present in parent management training so let's recap again when a therapist and a, a parent work together they first focus on parents and the child's uh, relationship here they will try to understand what kind of communication style both the parent and child share with each other what are the uh, parents perception and how is the child's perception uh, similar and different from the parents interaction 
once the commonalities and differences are uh, taken to consideration the next thing the therapist will look for is how a parent is responding and choosing to respond to child's behaviors now when i say behaviors here i specifically mean maladaptive behaviors or behaviors that are not helpful for the child once the uh, a record is taken by the therapist on how the parent is responding they will then slowly move to the psychoeducation part they will here try to build an insight into the parent about how uh, their uh, response is further reinforcing the child's behavior or how there is an insufficiency in the response that is uh, pushing the child to again uh, choose maladaptive behavior so when we talk about psychoeducation parents can uh, always learn a lot more about themselves they can also learn about how they are interacting and uh, building a bond with their child it is one of the most deepest and a very highly emotional uh, section where parents really uh, are you know <coughs> brought to the limelight on their uh, you know uh, their response or their communication with the child it is very very important for the therapist to uh, empathetically and uh, slowly uh, you know respond to the uh, parent and uh, provide a lot of emotional and uh, uh, what do we say a uh, mental support to the parent now once the psychoeducation is provided the parent is already at a insight level where their insight uh, where they achieve a true emotional insight to what have they been doing so far and what best they can do for the child it is a stage of mental preparation for the parents and it is at complete uh, discretion of the therapist that the parent is now prepared and ready for parent management training now once the parent management training is achieved now once the both parent and therapist are working together weeks and weeks later they can always come back again and choose to reflect on how much they have achieved so far what progress they both have made so far and what they can expect in the future sessions so revision and uh, going back and reflection reflecting on their uh, whole process will only happen when both the parent and the therapist are committed towards uh, you know uh, coming at a common goal reaching to the common objective and helping the child reach their true potential uh, so i think next slide so uh, next previous slide please so here we are going to learn about the parent management training strategies the therapist can train the parents on uh, when the parent is interacting with the child outside the session now please remember if a child goes to a therapist for a one is to one counseling or one is to one inter intervention in a uh, what do we say counseling session it only goes up to 45 minutes to 1 hour in an applied behavioral analysis or a aba intervention technique a uh, therapy center where behaviors are uh, you know modifiable behaviors are more and where the child needs constant supervision the maximum time a therapist can give a child is for 2 and a half to 3 hours but most of the time uh when even a special educator works with the child it is only for half an hour to 1.5 hours a parent and the child are at maximum interaction and you know touch with each other so here parent becomes the primary uh, stakeholder when we provide p- uh, parent management training so the first protocol we'll discuss at length is so i think next slide please identifying miscommunication and breaking the patterns now the first and the most uh, uh, what do we say a uh, obvious uh, pattern any therapist notice notices is the coercive cycle now what is coercive cycle i'll give it through an example a parent 
uh, and a child go for shop uh, buying groceries. Now the child says, I want uh, a chocolate or an ice cream. The parent rationalizes by telling that you've had enough of chocolates. It has caused you, uh, you know, uh, problems in your teeth. Your teeth have become soft and it might lead to, uh, you know, play, plug or it might lead to you losing your teeth. So let us not forget chocolate. Now the parent has really rationalized and given an objective reality to the child. But the child uses a negative behavior to exert control by throwing a tantrum. Now the child starts screaming and yelling at the uh, grocery shop. Now parent also repeats the cycle by yelling at the child. I have said I am not going to give you. Why are you again and again throwing a tantrum? Is this the way to behave? Now this triggers the negative response of the child and he throws a bigger tantrum. Now this cycle will keep on continuing until one of them gives in. It's most often the parent who gives in and lets the child take, get away with the tantrum they have thrown. So at the end, the parent does buy the chocolate or the ice cream to the child. So when we come into the psychoeducation phase of therapy, what happens is this uh, this cycle is first discussed between the therapist and the parent. That is, if it does happen. In not all cases it happens. But when it does, uh, this is something that is always, uh, you know, coming into the limelight. The next most miscommunication uh, or the challenge is the uh, uh, emotional and social absence. Again, if the child, there are always uh, different ways a child expresses their needs for, for being uh, choosing or requiring the emotional and social security from a parent. They may not always directly come and tell you that I want uh, your time or I want your attention. Instead, they begin to choose uh, non-verbal cues or they may choose uh, different ways to seek attention. Uh, young and small children may do things like applying parents' makeup or they may dress in a very funny order or a fashion or they may purposefully throw a plate or throw an object on the floor to seek attention. What uh, a slightly older children do is they scream or shout or they run behind parents or uh, you know they keep seeking uh, attention in some way or the other. They may do the opposite of what the parent is asking just so that they get that attention from the parent. In teenagers, it is most often, uh, you know, not listening to parents, sometimes uh, doing funny things like, you know, staying late at night, not following the house rules, uh, deliberately disobeying parents. Again, they, they try to express that they need emotional and social comfort from parents by choosing these behaviors that they're most comfortable with or something that they know a parent will respond to. So what happens is we need to identify these patterns and these uh, communication channels to uh, remediate and find a positive solution or a, a newer approach in how we can uh, remediate this. The next is inconsistent communication. Inconsistent communication is when a parent sets an expectation from the child and the child is very clear with what is being expected. But again, the parent is not keeping a check on the child. For example, if a parent has set an expectation from the child that if anyone comes to a house, they are our guests. Your ex I expect you to bring water to the guest. It's a very simple expectation. Now what happens is the child forgets to uh, bring water for one guest at one time. The parent ignores it or says it's fine, it only happened once. And they take over the child's responsibility by bringing the water. Again, what happens? The child has un understood that I got away from it. So the next time the ch uh, another guest comes, the child might try to test or they might try to see if my parents are going to notice this or not. And then they will again here try to see if they can uh, get away by not bringing water. And if the parent again uh, uh, dismisses it or does not take it into account, then this behavior will keep repeating until 
the whole behavior fades away and now the child knows that if a guest comes over a period of time they realize that or they learn that if a guest comes it's not the responsibility they can leave the house and you know let the parents entertain the guests they are not obligated to be a part of the social gathering but if the parent catches it right there immediately then what happens the child immediately learns over a period of time that it is my social obligation to treat my guests who come at home uh, with respect and with you know warmth and welcome sometimes when they are in, in many uh, rare situations when there are high levels of stress in the family when parents are not on the same board with each other or there are uh, you know intermarital relationship issues where parent uh, uh, additional family members come in and you know uh, add source to the stress or there are financial challenges or there are uh, issues with respect to uh, parents uh, managing their entire relationship on a, a forefront it directly reflects on the child's uh, autonomy and the child's response to stress here the children understand that they can test the rules and the expectations set by the parents at any point they want because parents are not uh, worried or they are not thinking about the child as much see this becomes the conception which again is not true parents are worried but this is the uh, feeling that a child gets into so what happens here is familial stress and letting the stress come in between a parent and child communication will bring in different perceptions will bring in different expectations and different uh, challenges that again will can be remediated by uh, parent management training so i think next slide please now again once you identify the miscommunication patterns the next thing is to prepare the parents as a therapist your uh, duty becomes uh, to help the parent record the occurrence and duration of the maladaptive behaviors of the child and as a parent your duty becomes to actually record the occurrences of uh, any of these maladaptive behaviors so in a day you can choose to uh, <coughs> check how often uh, uh, you know uh undesirable behavior has occurred prior to this undesirable behavior was there something or was there a issue or an incident that triggered this behavior yes or no sometimes the issue can trigger sometimes it may not trigger and that is completely okay you will only find that out once we start recording and once this behaviors do occur for how long do they occur so this is something we need to record now the therapists and parents should also come on common ground on how to give instruction to the child always remember children at any age look for consistency they only respond to consistency and they only respond well to security if there is an inconsistency in uh, the presentation of instructions or if there is an inconsistency on checking the uh, expectation being met or not the child will not follow through so how do you give instructions to a child when to give instructions to the child for how long can we instruct these are all the things that a therapist will prepare the parent for and then the last one and more important part is the presentation of our non verbal cues for instance you uh, as a therapist your uh, the parent and therapist are on the same board therapist and the parent are on the same uh, what do i say a level or on the same board now therapist has asked the parent therapist has asked the parent to um, so therapist has asked the parent on how to uh, you know uh, check for any maladaptive behavior for example the therapist has told the uh, parent each time you go outside why don't you hold the hand of your child so that the child knows that physically you are there for the uh, child right 
and the child feels physically secure in the environment now what happens is the parent will uh, start following this now the parent will hold the child's hand each time they go out and they start, you know provide the physical security for the child initially things go well the child realizes that you know the parent is there for him or her and they start responding it in a very positive way but soon what happens is the child gets used to the physical security now comes the emotional security part now the child has understood that yes my parent is there for me right but now they want emotional security from the parent now instead of directly communicating to the parent they start testing the parent by leaving the hand and running away or uh, or you know they will try to uh, stop or delay the movement of the parent by saying i have to tie my shoelaces i want to drink water just to test how much the parent is really there for the child now when uh, the child is continuously delaying or a pattern of the delay is uh, being identified using non verbal cues becomes important so as a parent you can always uh, choose to not give eye contact when you know a disruptive behavior is being thrown you can always change your voice modulation you can from a very gentle tone give a firm tone i expect us to reach on time let's move on right so instead of saying let's go to the park you have suddenly modulated to a very firm tone and then you can also choose to give how much attention you want in how in different settings so while you give a lot of attention to the child when they're outside because they seek physical security from you does not mean that same attention is provided at home at home the child knows that you know you your presence is always there so they can always come out to you and seek your attention so you moving away or withdrawing yourself from that situation will again reinforce that yes i am there for you but i also expect you to be uh, independent on your own uh, so i think next slide please now next uh, this is the most important aspect of it learning the behavioral protocols uh, the first one we are going to learn is positive and negative reinforcement so i think next slide please positive reinforcement is nothing but a uh, desirable consequences are added to promote an existing positive behavior for example aisha here uh, gets a gift from her parents because she scored 95% in her final exam so what happens is the parent is here rewarding and acknowledging her efforts and the result she has gotten as supposed to negative reinforcement where a stimuli is removed to promote or to expand the desirable behavior now instead of studying aisha is very busy watching tv so the parent simply hides the remote now once you have removed the stimuli or removed the remote in the situation aisha has no option but to go and study so now aisha automatically puts her attention back to studies and now she scores 95% uh next slide please i think uh next is positive punishment here what now in reinforcement we spoke about improving and focusing on desirable behavior in punishment we focus on the undesirable behavior when we use positive for punishment we use an undesirable consequence to reduce an undesirable behavior for example Aisha was expected to study for her exam but again she went and played basketball with her friends now when this lady reached home not only did she have to study right but she also had to spend an entire sunday helping her parents complete household chores now what they have added is they have added an undesirable consequence of spending an entire holiday doing household work instead of playing outside basketball with the friends now next is negative punishment negative punishment is again desirable consequences taken away to reduce the undesirable behavior here aisha was given a lot of reminders to study for her exams 
but again she scored low marks so what happened aisha did not take her academics very seriously and the direct consequence was low marks now to reduce this entire consequence of low marks what have the parents done they've taken away a desirable uh, consequence which is a toys and board games now once they took away something that she really likes what happens aisha began to focus on her studies and she has realized to take her reminder seriously and uh, you know she, the parents have also expected her to study well now the highest form of uh, reward of reinforcement that works is positive reward and the least changes in a behavior works with negative punishment so it is always important as a parent to use positive reinforcement where we continuously focus on positive responses behaviors and use that uh, positive reward as an incentive uh, to redirect the child's attention from the negative consequences or negative behavior or undesirable behaviors negative punishment has never really given the expected uh, con- uh, you know result what a parent or the therapist has been looking for Uh, this has come again from 30 years of research from uh, identifying which reinforcement technique works the best side next slide please the next one is time out procedure time out procedure is an age old procedure that has been in works from 1930s or 1940s this is a timeless uh, procedure where the highlight is on removing the stimuli from the environment for the child to realign and refocus on their energies what happens is a lot of children get stimulated by the environment or they get really hyper or they start expending too much energy in the environment and it comes out of control when we provide time out procedure the parent is not actively giving a lot of feedback or attention instead they are asking the child to realign with their energy and their attention levels by giving them a place where there is no where they can get attention or distraction from so spending time in their room without tv or without a board game or without any attention or asking them to sit in a corner of a room or asking them to spend time in a quiet corner will help them realign and refocus their energies now time out procedure will only work on a single behavior that requires immediate reduction for it works best for children who get hyper stimulated who get high, uh, over uh, uh, enthusiastic with the environment for example if a child is throwing uh, se- uh, severe tantrums if the child is getting too hyper and excited seeing different colors or hearing sounds if the child is continuously making noise or dis- creating distraction in the classroom or in a grocery shop if the child is continuously running around not able to contain the energy levels here in multiple situation time out procedure is used for calming them down once the child is calmed down then you can explain why the child was given a time out if the child does not understand why the time out was given do not get stressed because the, it will take time and effort for the child to understand where they are sometimes children do throw tantrums and uh, expend their energy without any conscious reason to it they get stimulated or over excited that goes beyond their control or regulation and that is where we immediately need to apply time out procedure if a child is not able to understand you or understand the reason why they were given a time out it is okay to uh, let it go it is not always that we expect the child to listen to us or you know level with us it's all right and once the time out procedure is given set right expectations with the child right expectations means next time when we go to the grocery shop i expect you to use polite words or i expect you to request me tell me what are you looking for or tell me what do you want 
do not raise your voice or throw a tantrum that will not be appreciated or in the classroom the teacher can always tell that if you have something to discuss you are always welcome to meet me in the staff room you are always welcome to come to me onto the desk and talk about what you are thinking but do not disturb or create a, you know a distraction for your classmates so setting right expectations with the child will help them understand on how they can regulate their hyperactivity uh, next slide please saiti a uh, saiti next is modeling new behaviors modeling new behaviors is a classic a theory coming from social learning theory from bandura uh, bandura was a social uh, psychologist who basically found that children learn a lot by watching their adults and people in the environment a lot of their internal learning happens at a very automatic speed simply by watching and learning how adults respond to different stimuli now what happens is children will always learn uh, what a parent is doing and they are more likely to imitate a parent or a adult or even a teacher in the classroom for a matter of fact that is how children learn language that is also how children learn how to deal with stress how to deal with their emotions and they also learn how to deal with their uh, you know uh, any difficult situation uh, that they undergo so first thing as parents we need to do is uh, limit any exposure to negative content negative information like uh, uh, scenes from movies or shows or anywhere where abusive or uh, you know uh, offensive words and behaviors are used please do not uh, you know expose children to them as it has never helped anyone or it has never served any positive purpose either right now next this uh, as teachers and parents it becomes even more bigger role to uh, display pro social behaviors in the presence of child pro social behaviors are as small as inviting people to home uh greeting someone uh, whom we pass by uh, saying hi to uh, your neighbors or uh, treating uh, our parents or elderly when they are sick with you know food and medicine when we look at these children learn from these pro social behaviors more than verbal instructions then follow your own rule to build consistency if you have a rule at home saying that at 9 o'clock all the lights will be off and we need to sleep you will also have to turn on your off own lights and uh, promote a, you know positive sleeping patterns at home if you, uh, there is a rule in the house that says dinner is at 6:30 or 7 in the evening uh, you can always engage the children in preparing dinner you can as parents always engage the child in uh, you know helping you set the table what happens is you're building a habit and a positive uh, actionable consequence and a sense of consistency and if you are as a parent or a therapist or a teacher if you are trying to build new skills in a child say you want to teach a child how to use shoe lace or how to uh, learn uh, you know making presentations on computer you can always uh first show it on your screen or first show it to the child and expect the child to follow your actions with uh, when we use a lot of verbal instructions the child will get confused or the child will start uh, not taking it seriously and uh, next is to always uh, display consistent ethics uh, the simplest way to remedy uh, poor sleeping patterns uh inconsistency in you know their habits uh not following through their uh, homework or not following through their schedule is to make your own schedule and to show a uh, children through example that i am following a schedule i have made a commitment and i am following through i am completing my tasks on time right so these are the ways we can model new behaviors for children so i think next slide please next is instructional training this is a very very important method where we provide uh, instructions given to the point 
when we choose to use too many words or over explain any concept or any idea to the child the child will get highly confused or they may have a lot more many questions and the whole purpose of giving instruction will get lost so provide simple to the point instructions and do not repeat these instructions until the child has made an attempt whether the child has successfully made the attempt or unsuccessfully made the attempt is fine but we should not again and again repeat the instruction until and unless the child has made the attempt if the child has made an error it's okay to make an error right we all learn through uh, trial and error learning you give a re instruction to the child and then again wait for the child to follow the instruction now when you are giving instruction always maintain eye contact if it is difficult or if you are teaching a child also to make an eye contact always look at the tip of the nose or on the left side of the eye what happens is <laughs> you are uh, teaching a child on how they should uh, you know have confident communication how they should uh, uh, present themselves socially and as well as you are uh, giving them a uh, example or a chance for them to model you but in any instances where you feel that the child is deliberately making error or you know trying to seek negative attention from you do not maintain eye contact and do not give attention to that behavior if we give attention by saying this is wrong i know you can do it i think you should do it what happens is the child will continuously keep making the same error because they are liking that attention that you are giving so in this situation actively avoid uh, making eye contact do not look at the mistakes and do not even say that this is wrong if you say this is wrong again they will continue making it the error or try to seek your time and energy by saying please help me again i don't know how to do it so it's very important to gauge or uh, try to see how willingly the child can commit to the uh, new action or the activity that you are teaching if you think the child can do it by himself and just needs time and energy, uh, practice then it's always a good idea not to overly give instructions but if you feel that the child really is struggling and is not able to make anything break that uh, activity into smaller parts and for each activity set smaller micro goals until they reach the point of getting through the uh, expectation you have set our uh, next slide please saiti now the most important part is as therapists and parents we should learn when we can provide autonomy to the child children always learn best through three things consistency trial and error and positive feedback these are the only three things children actually need to build an autonomous and confident self so when we give a lot of space and time for them to learn through trial and error and continuously give uh, constructive feedback what happens is the child will begin to acknowledge your efforts you are putting in them and try to seek uh, uh your approval or they'll try to match your expectations then objectively assess the child's progress and reward the positive outcome do not reward anything else apart from the our positive outcome but if the child is not able to reach or if the child is not able to meet your expectation always motivating the child verbally by saying i know you can do it you have come this far helping the child reflect where they have the shortcoming will help them reach where they should be reaching now once the child has learned a new uh, uh, activity or learned a new behavior give multiple opportunities for the child to generalize their learnings so at home if you have taught the child how to uh, greet socially how to uh, interact with people on a social level take them outside take them to relatives place take them outside to movies or uh, in a mall help them you know provide them with the opportunity where they can exercise what they have learned so what happens is the child gets more confidence in uh, the learnings that they have learned from you and how easily they can build the social rapport that they have been learning from you all this time
and then reinforce the expected outcomes and potential behaviors through positive reinforcement again giving verbal reward like i know you can do it you're a champion i believe in you will help a child much more uh, uh, you know positively as compared to uh, your 8 years old you still don't know how you can uh, not say hi to your uh, friends and family members why can't you look at a person in the eye this will really uh, you know put a lot of doubt in the child's capacity they may not feel confident about their own actions or their efforts right so it's always important to give positive reward or po- verbal positive reinforcement and when the child is displaying negative behavior it is always important to uh, reduce the uh, attention or reduce your uh, praise or even reduce your uh, uh, presence in the child's uh, what do we say uh, tantrum if a child is actively getting angry aggressive throwing a tantrum raising the roof not being able to level uh, objectively or rationally is consistently under an emotional distress until and unless the child is not feeling low or the child is feeling if the child is not feeling ill confident or low if the self esteem is not impacted do not give attention to these behaviors as they will again reinforce that next time when i throw a tantrum i will get what i want so this is something we don't want to get involved in uh so i think next slide please to conclude we have to see how effective parent man- parent management training is it's only effective if we follow through the follow uh, reminders so i think so both the first thing is both the parent and therapist should be always on the same page if there are any uh, a uh, different expectation so if there is any uh, time where a parent or a therapist feels that they both are right and you know uh, <laughs> both are not willing to uh, go back down i would suggest both uh, to you know come to a common compromise or come to a common understanding on where they can begin to work with the child because child's modifying the child's mild adaptive behavior and improving pro social behavior is always the ultimate and the primary goal here then uh, average parent management training session will depend from one week to four weeks per session four four uh, sessions per week and uh, more importantly at a length uh, it can go from four uh, weeks to 24 weeks at maximum the next this the goal should be mutually decided by the parent and therapist again uh then therapist will always assign achievable and objective goals to the parent but if the therapist is giving goals which are far out of reach or the parent is really not able to comprehend these goals then it will be very difficult for the chi- parent to uh, deliver these goals to the child so it is always expected that therapist should first understand the parent's uh, mindset the parent's uh, willingness to implement the goals and the parents involvement in the child's life and then the goal should be uh, assigned accordingly now once the parent has learned these uh, techniques and skills the parents are always again expected to follow through them and report the feedback to the therapist uh saiti next slide please and the ineffectiveness will only happen in parent management training if uh saiti next slide both the parents and therapists are again on a different page if they don't have an open and honest communication then the whole exercise and the point of the exercise will be lost if the parents are unavailable uh, or if the parents are not really uh, giving the time energy and space for these intervention again it will not work uh, as the therapist is planning or expecting for the outcome if there is any inconsistency in delivering techniques or the intervention protocol it will again not work because children understand consistency any child will only understand how consistent uh, the environment is around them and if there are too many external forces for example if the child is in a joint family 
or if there is an active involvement of the parent social circle or if the child has too many activities outside school hours like uh, dance classes or tuitions or swimming or basketball or uh, you know extracurricular activities or if the child has too many uh, distractions going on then the delivery will not be effective so it is always important to discuss all these aspects uh, with the therapist before even beginning a plan of action so how do we uh, saiti next slide please to conclude the entire session uh, saiti next slide oh so parent management training is a very very beautiful and a very progressive uh, intervention protocol that really challenges and goes beyond traditional approaches it goes much much beyond uh, you know the therapist being the center of uh, intervention uh, or a guide it goes beyond the therapist taking on the uh, you know responsibility or parents not being un not understanding or not really uh, getting into the true spirit of how intervention works right uh it really brings out a true collaborative approach parents are also a key team players when it comes to modifying these child uh, maladaptive behaviors it brings about a lot of collaboration patience empathy and uh, under, uh, you know emotional understanding between both the therapist and parent even to set simple small goals because both are adults both really need to be on the same page when it comes to setting expectations on what can be the realistic goals and outcomes and once that whole uh, process is set it or uh, parent management training builds a very strong connection between parents and their child or their children uh, so with this i concludes uh, these are my references so If anyone is interested to read more, I can always share these references with all of you. Uh, so this has been my presentation. I would take question answers or any. Oh, are there any questions or any answers? Or uh, uh, sorry, are there any questions or any suggestions or are there any thoughts to this? no oh i see some of you have raised your hand and it's like it's, it's increasing oh, the other day the guy who was keeping inside okay i told him dude you're jumping and it's dis everyone um, i see telugu one telugu one the participant the name uh, you have raised your hand this is this will be a perfect time to ask any kind of questions that you have okay uh, if you have any kind of questions this will be the perfect time to ask Okay, I'll be here till the end of the session. If anyone has any thoughts to share or any questions to us, I and Sakti will be here. So I would uh, no, like. No, I I really don't have any questions, but it was a wonderful session, and I got to learn a lot from this. Thank, Thank you, you, Mahi. Thank you, Mahi. Oh, sure, ma'am.